Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and what you see here in front of me is the Toybox 3D printer. And if you think that looks familiar, this is actually a CreateBot Super Mini modified by Toybox for your enjoyment. Yes, this is an Indiegogo 3D printer. And before you moan and throw something at the screen or turn this video off, give it just a second. First, let's talk about the actual hardware itself. It is a CreateBot Super Mini, but the SD card slot and the USB slot in the front have been removed. The CreateBot Super Mini well, it's 85 on the X, 80 on the Y, and 94 millimeters on the Z, giving it a total build volume of 639.2 cubic centimeters. The toy box on their Indiegogo page retails for $249 for the early birds, and you get a spool of filament with it. So we'll go with that price. And at that price and at that build volume, you are paying 39 cents per cubic centimeter. So this all started because I reached out to Toybox. I thought it was an interesting solution and I thought it might be interesting for the school that my kids go to. In talking with them, they said that they could donate a couple printers to my kids' school and asked if I wanted to do a video on it. I am interested in doing a video on this because I find it interesting and I find it trying to solve a problem that no one has yet quite solved. How it works is this, you get yourself a toy box, you plug it in, you connect it to your home Wi-Fi, and then using any device, you can browse the back end full of pre-sliced models, send them to the printer, and the printer will print them out. As an example, this little guy was printed on the toy box printer, and each color you see is a different print, and each little connector in between the arms and the wrists is a connector. I like it. So even though I really like this guy, uh, he's got a sword, but it's not a Minecraft looking sword. And I think a Minecraft looking sword would go great in his other hand. Thankfully, on the Toy Box app, I can see the sword that was printed, and right below that, I can see the pixelated sword that I would want to print. So at this point, it's simple. I hit the print me button. The printer moves, it homes in X and Y, and then it begins to heat up. You can actually see on the front panel, it does say heating, and you can see on the app, it says Minecraft style sword, and it gives a countdown timer. Cool. In order to level the build plate, there's some screws underneath, and there is a screw in the back that hits against the, the Z homing sensor to make sure that the nozzle height is correct. Those come pre-adjusted from the factory, I'm told. All right, well, once this is done printing, We'll see if the sword fits in the hand, and then we'll get some final thoughts. So what's kind of nice is when the toy's done printing, you get yourself a message on your phone. Awesome, your pixelated sword is finished and ready to go. It does repeat the message, but again, the software, well, it's not released yet, so I'm guessing they'll fix that. All right, the print is done. To get it off the build plate, they wanted to incorporate ease of use, and they wanted to make sure it was safe for kids. So check this out. It's removable, and it's essentially a refrigerator magnet. And there's the sword. It just comes right off because it's got a magnetic backing and that's metal, so it sticks to it. Here's the sword. It's not perfect, but remember, this printer isn't going for engineering perfection. This printer isn't going for cosplay helmet. This printer is making little toy swords for little toy people. I find that interesting. Let's see if the sword fits. All right, the sword fits in the hand, sort of. I did have to force it, but that's kind of cool because this sword actually has a little connector end on it and it's built to go into this hand. This sword is built as a display piece, but you know what? It's a toy and I wanted to play with it, so I shoved this sword into this hand and now it fits. All right, so Let's get to the bottom of this. Where do we go from here? It's $249 machine. It can print okay. It has a small build area. It does have a removable non-heated magnetic build plate that flexes like a refrigerator magnet. It prints in PLA. It has wireless connectivity. It does have an app for iOS and Android, and you can access it via a web browser. In the app and in the web browser, you can pick from their curated library. You can upload your own STL and G code. You can draw pictures that it will then extrude and send to the printer. 
you will be able to upload photos and have it print those as well. It looks like this printer is targeted towards a parent that may want to see if their kid is interested in 3D printing. With a parent's help, a child would be able to operate this and using an app on a device that a child already knows how to use would be able to print things and make themselves uh, little statues or Lego compatible bricks or Minecraft swords or whatever. You know, I reviewed the New Matter Mod T and I didn't recommend the printer because I didn't think it did a good enough job and I didn't think that the options it offered in its curated library were enough to justify the price and the quality. However, I believe this to be different. The app is working well for an app that hasn't been made public yet or, or for a product that hasn't been made public yet. The web interface is working. I think they're really onto something. Now, as a disclaimer, of course, I'm not telling you to go back this Indiegogo campaign, but I found the premise of this machine interesting and I wanted to make sure you knew about it. This is a pre-production model and what you get if you were to back it via Indiegogo could be different via looks, functionality, or packaging. And again, full disclosure, I did inquire about getting printers for my kids' school, and they asked if I wanted to do a video on the printer, and I agreed. So there we go. I find it to be interesting technology. I find it to be an interesting use of the technology. And I think that it's starting to get into that price for features bracket that just feels right. I think that if you were a parent with a young kid who wanted to get into 3D printing, but you weren't sure if they wanted to, this seems like a great entry level device. It's not perfect, but it's getting closer. The toy box machine and machines like the toy box that use a curated backend service and an application and Wi-Fi connectivity, I believe are going to become more commonplace in the near future. I think that's a good thing to get people interested in 3D printing, but then again, it's up to all of us who already love 3D printing to then say, wow, you like this? Check this out. Look at this Rostock Max V3 with its towers going all crazy. Look at this huge G-Max printer. Look at this Creality CR10 that doesn't cost much more. And once you've learned about 3D printing, you can build yourself your own space helmets. I think that's where we're getting. And I think this is an important step. And if it's not this machine, it's going to be a machine similar to this that gets us there. All right, well, that was just a little preview of this machine. It's completely and totally up to you to decide if it's something you wanna pursue. I'll put a link down in the description. I love the idea and I think they're getting close with their execution. And once backer units are shipped, I will get a final unit to review officially. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not and ring that bell if you wanna get notified of when cool stuff gets uploaded. A big thanks to everybody that supports me via Patreon and YouTube Red and if you let the ads play. And finally, don't forget to hug each other more. I love you guys. I mean, as always, mini Minecraft swords are cool and high five. Oh wait, should I do some voiceover? Hi, I'm Joel and I got me a sword. Look at the sword, I got a sweet sword. There's a sword printing behind me and, and it's gonna be awesome. And then I'm gonna have two swords. Hello, YouTubes.